The first and most important step to learning transit network modeling in Vizum is to understand the concept of transportation systems and modes in Vizum and the differences in relationships between these two elements in Vizum. A transportation system in Vizum is defined as the type of transport vehicle traveling on the network. It may be a car, a bus, a tram, and so forth. Further, transport systems in Vizum are classified into two types. A. Private, represented by the abbreviation PRT, and B. Public, represented by the abbreviation PUT. A transportation system in Vizum is abbreviated as TSIS. For the purpose of transit network modeling, the type of TSIS transportation system used is PUT. Vizum allows multiple transportation systems to be defined and allowed or disallowed on links, connectors, or turns. Now that we have an idea of what a transportation system in Vizum is, let us understand what a mode in Vizum is. A mode connects one or several transportation systems in Vizum. A mode may consist of only one PRT-type transport system, but may have several PUT-type transportation systems. Thus, if a mode is defined or named as transit, it may consist of bus, tram, and rail, defined as TSIS in the network. Thus, a transport system is a subset of a mode. Also, another fundamental difference between TSIS and modes is that TSIS is not used directly in the mode choice, whereas mode is used in mode choice. Now that we understand the basic definitions of transport systems and modes, let us see how these can be defined in Vizum. First, we learn how to define a transport system. To do this, select Demand, TSIS, Modes, DSEGS. Notice that there are some predefined transport systems, modes, and demand segments in Vizum. These can be changed and removed, but at least one transport system must exist in a Vizum version file. Next, select the Transport Systems tab, click Create, enter a code and name for the transportation system, example B is code and bus is name. Then select PUT in the Type drop-down. Enter a default speed as required in the VPUT entry box or leave to default. Lastly, click OK. In the Create Mode and Demand segment menu, click OK if you wish to allocate only one transport system to a mode. Otherwise, check off Create Mode and Demand segment automatically, and then click OK. This completes the creation of a transport system in Vizum. Second, we learn how to define a mode in Vizum. To do this, select the Modes tab and click Create. Enter a suitable code and name for this new mode. Say Transit and select Type as PUT from the drop-down for Transit. Next, select the transportation systems to be included in this mode. For example, if you wish to include bus and light rail transportation systems under a single mode, Transit, select both bus and light rail from the Transport Systems list box. For the interchangeable checkbox, if the option has been selected, the mode does not have to be used by all vehicle journeys of a chain, but can be interchanged by a different mode. If the option has not been selected, the mode has to be used by all vehicle journeys of a chain. This option is only relevant for demand modeling with the EVA and the VZIM model, which is beyond the scope of this tutorial. To complete the definition of a mode, click OK. In this section, we will learn how transit stops and access to these stops are modeled in Vizum. First, let us understand how stops are represented in Vizum. Vizum has three types of transit stops in a hierarchical setup. At the bottom of the hierarchy are stop points. These represent the points of boarding of a passenger. The next level is the stop area. A stop area may represent an area of boarding like a platform of a railway station or an island of a bus transit center. A stop area may also represent an intermediate point of a stop such as a mezzanine. Thus, a stop area may contain zero or more stop points. The highest level in the stop definition hierarchy is the stop. 
A stop can be thought to represent an entire transit station. Thus, a stop can contain zero or more stop areas and consequently stop points, although a stop is of little or no use with zero stop areas and zero stop points. Now that we know the basic definitions of the types of stops in VZoom, let's see how these can be defined on a VZoom network. First, we see a simple example where we define stop, stop area, and stop points in a one-to-one -one overlaid manner. This type of definition is typically used in case of an isolated transit stop, which does not lie at a location where a transfer can be made. Select Stop Point in the Network Objects menu and then select Insert Mode. In the Create Stop Points Options menu, the stop point may be created on a node or it may be created on a link by selecting the appropriate checkbox in the Options dialog. As a first example, select On Node to create a stop point on a node, and then click on a node in the network window to place the stop point on the node. In the Create Stop Point dialog, select the appropriate applicable transport systems to the stop point by clicking the Transport Systems tab and selecting one or more options in the list box. Finally, click OK to complete the definition of the stop point. In this type of definition, once the stop point is created, the corresponding stop area and stop are automatically created over it. This can be seen by dragging the stop area and stop point away from the stop point. If this functionality is to be disabled, check Create Stop Automatically Off in the Create Stop Point options while creating the stop point. A stop point on a node can be used by a line in both directions. Next, let's create a stop point over a link. To do this, select Insert Mode in the Network Objects menu and then select Stop Points. Select the On Link checkbox in the Create Stop Point options. Checking Directed will create a stop point that can be used by a line only in a specific direction of travel. If this is not desired, check this option off before creating the stop point. Again, if this stop point is being created for an existing stop, then check Generate Stop Automatically Off, otherwise leave it checked on. Lastly, select the location of the stop point on a link in the network and point and click to create the stop point. Click OK to complete the definition of the stop point. This covers the basic transit stop definition where stop, stop area and stop point are all defined at the same point. This is the basic situation seen in most simple transit networks. Let us now learn how to create a transit center or a transfer hub. To do this, we will first create a stop. Select Insert Mode, then select Stops from the Network Objects menu and click on any location in the network where the stop is to be created. Give this stop a name, say Transit Center, and click OK. This represents a transit center. Next, let's define stop areas to represent platforms or bus bays in the transit center. In the Insert mode, select the Stop Areas tab in the Network Objects and create a stop area by clicking in the network where the stop area is to be created. Name this stop area Bus Island 1 Stop Area. Check the Stop Automatically associated to this stop area by VZoom. If this is not desired, then it may be changed by clicking the question mark symbol next to Stop in the Stop Area dialog box. Click OK to complete the definition. Similarly, create another stop area with the name Streetcar Platform 1 Stop Area in another part of the network near the stop. Create other stop areas as needed. Next, define the last layer of the transit stop definition by creating stop points. Select Insert Mode, then select Stop Points from the Network Objects window. In the Create Stop Point options, select on Link, check Directed, and check Generate Stop Automatically Off. Select a link in the vicinity of a stop area and click to place the stop point in that location. In the Create Stop Point dialog, enter a name for this new stop point and check the associated stop area and stop with this stop point under Stop in the dialog menu. 
To change the stop area associated with this stop point, select the question mark against stop area. Select the required stop area to be associated with this stop point from the Find Stop Area dialog and click Close. After the required stop area has been associated with the stop point, click OK to complete the definition of the stop point. Define more stop points as needed and similarly associate these stop points with stop areas to build up the complete transit center. Lastly, we must now create a transfer walk time definition that contains information about the time it takes to travel from one stop area to another stop area. This information will be used by VZoom's Transit Itinerary Building Algorithm to determine transfer times between two transit routes with the walk time constraint. It is applicable to timetable or headway-based assignments. In our case, this includes possible transfers between Bus Island 1, Intercity Bus Platform 1, Street Bus Stop Areas 1 and 2, Streetcar Platform 1, and Commuter Rail Platform 1. Let's define transfer walk time for our transit center. Select Edit Mode, then select Stops from the Network Objects menu. Next, double-click the Stop Transit Center and select the Walk Times Stop Areas tab in the Edit Stop dialog. The stop areas are referenced by number so it can be helpful to browse back and forth between the Stop Areas tab to see more detail about each stop area. The walk time stop areas can be thought of as a skim matrix of walk times between stop areas. Begin entering suitable walk times. If the time is left as blank, it is assumed that a direct walking leg between these two stop area pairs is not possible, although transfers may still be possible via an intermediate stop area. In the default transit assignment setting, a shortest path search will be performed between the stop areas of the stop. The shortest path search can sometimes find shorter walk times between an intermediate stop area. If this would be possible, the slower direct times will be highlighted in red while editing. When finished entering the walk times, click OK. After the definition for stops, stop areas and stop points is completed, Access nodes can be defined so that trips from the Transportation Analysis Zone loaded onto the Transportation Network can access transit stops using these access nodes. In certain circumstances, access nodes should not be defined for stop areas if the stop area is not assumed to be directly connected to the Transportation Network. A good example of this would be a mezzanine or a platform where either of them is not directly connected to local streets. Depending on how detailed the model is to be, the modeler could instead create nodes representing mezzanines, platforms, etc., and links representing connections between mezzanines, platforms, etc. This later method of network representation of stop architecture requires changing the walk links within a stop setting in the assignment view of the PUT functions in the calculation procedures to search without restrictions. To establish a transit access node, double-click a stop area, and then click the question mark button against Access Node in the Edit Stop Area Dialog Basis tab. From the list of nodes in the Find Node dialog, select the appropriate access node and click Close to allocate the selected node to the stop area. This completes the definition of a transit center in VZoom. Alternatively, the process of setting access nodes of stop areas may be carried out automatically if many such associations are to be made in a network. To do this, select Edit Mode and then select Stop Areas from the Network Objects menu. Next, right-click anywhere in the network. Select Set Access Node in the Context menu. Enter a snap radius in order to specify the search area around the stop area that should be used to create the automatic association between the stop area and the access node. If a just only isolated stop areas is checked, only those stop areas which do not have an associated access node are allocated an access node after the search. If you wish to restrict the search for access nodes to only certain nodes in the network, a filter may be used on nodes and allocate only active nodes may be checked to restrict the search to only the active nodes. 
Finally, press the Execute button in order to allocate the access nodes to stop areas and then click Close. An alternative to using access nodes is to create stop points on nodes and then connecting the nodes on which the stop points lie directly to the Transportation Analysis Zone centroid. In either condition, it is necessary to make sure that walk is enabled on the zone connector so that a valid route search can be performed from one zone centroid to another zone centroid. In VZoom, lines and line routes are used to define transit routes in a network. Line and line routes, similar to stops, stop areas, and stop points, have a hierarchical structure. In this case, line routes are a subset of a line. Thus, one or more line routes can make up a line. In general, a line can be thought of as a route number, say 560, and line routes can be thought to represent the direction up and down of the route, say eastbound or westbound. The basic method of definition of lines and line routes is to first define a line and then define line routes within the line. A line route runs over a series of stop points where boarding or alighting may or may not be allowed. Let us define a line. Select Insert Mode and select Lines from the Network Objects menu. In the Create dialog, select Line and left-click anywhere in the network. In the Create Line dialog, enter a name for the line, say Route 560, and select a transport system for the line from the drop-down. The vehicle combination and operator is applicable for fare modeling and line costing. These are advanced topics and beyond the scope of this tutorial. Click OK to complete the creation of the line. Next, we create a line route belonging to the line that was just defined. From the Create dialog, select Line Route. Left click in the network window. The Create Line Route dialog will appear. In the Create Line Route dialog, select the line to which this line route belongs by using the Line drop-down. Enter a name for the line route in the Name field, say 560-WB to describe Route 560 westbound line route. Select a direction that is represented by this line route by using the Direction drop-down menu. After entering these basic properties of a line route, click OK. Now the course or shape of the line route can be defined. To start defining the shape of the line route, left click over the first stop point of the line route, hold the left click and drag the mouse to the next stop point or a stop point at a location further ahead in the course of the line route. VZoom will automatically include the points that lie in between this stop point by using an internal path search routine. The parameters for this search routine can be changed by clicking Parameters in the Edit Shape of Line Route dialog. The route search may be performed based on link length or link travel time by selecting the appropriate option in the search criterion. In the drop-down for the search criterion, selecting Link Length dash Dir Dist will use direct distance link length from the origin to the destination stop point. Selecting time from link length will use impedance calculated from the transport system speed of the links. Selecting time from speed def by link type will use impedance calculated from the transport system speed specified for the specific link type. And selecting link length will use impedance calculated by link length. In the checkbox options, use also closed links for routing will allow the links closed to the transport system to be taken into account as if they were open to the transport system. Use also closed turns for routing will allow the turns closed to the transport system to be taken into account as if they were open to the transport system. Serve stop points of new route will allow the stop points of the new course to be served. If the option has not been selected, the new line route will only serve the stop points that existed before the rerouting of the course. Serve only active stop points. The option is only available if you have selected the Serve New Stop Points option. 
If the option has been selected, passive stop points not meeting a filter criterion are not taken into account. Use Runtime from Link Network. If the option has been selected, you can pick a search criterion for the line route search. Continue the drag and drop process till the final stop point in the line route is reached, and then click OK in the Edit Line Route Shape menu to finish the shape definition of the line route. The basic properties of the line route will be displayed in the Edit Line Route dialog. Here you may allow or disallow boarding or alighting at stop points in the course of the line route by checking or unchecking the checkbox in the Items and Profiles tab. As a default, VZoom will automatically allow lighting and boarding at all stop points along the course of a line route. Click OK in the Edit Line Route tab to complete the definition of the line route. If the opposite direction of this line route happens to have the same course, it can be automatically created by VZoom. To do this, select Edit Mode and select Lines in Network Objects. Select Line Routes in the pop-up dialog, then select the line route for which you want to create the opposite direction. Right-click over the selected line route and select Create Opposite Direction. In Create Opposite Direction menu, enter the name for the line route in the opposite direction and select a direction using the Direction drop-down, then click OK. This will complete the creation of the new line route in the opposite direction. A time profile describes the temporal sequence of the line along the line route. However, specific departure times are not specified in a time profile, but the run times between the individual route points. A time profile is described by a sequence of profile points. This sequence of profile points is called the course of the time profile. A line route may have one or more time profiles associated with it. Multiple time profiles may be used in order to mimic travel times during specific times of the day or to represent run times at different days of service. After a line route is created, VZoom automatically creates a time profile for the line route. This time profile is calculated based on the time corresponding to the route search criteria used in the building of the line or the TSIS based runtime over the links in the course of the line route. Let us see how to edit a line route in VZoom. Select Edit Mode and then select Lines in the Network Objects window. Check Line Routes in the pop up dialog to view the line routes in the network. Double click the desired line route. Select the Items and Time Profiles tab in the Edit Line Route dialog. The time profile can be seen in the right side of the menu. To edit the time profile, enter values in the stop time field of the time profile table. The values in this table may be copied, pasted, or deleted like a spreadsheet by selecting cells, right clicking, and selecting the appropriate option from the context menu. Once the edits have been made, click OK to confirm the edits and complete the process of line route editing. Next, let us see how a time profile can be created in VZoom. Select Edit Mode and then select Lines in the Network Objects window. Check Line Routes in the pop-up dialog to view the line routes in the network. Double-click the desired line route. Select the Items and Time Profiles tab in the Edit Line Route dialog. Click on the plus icon to add a time profile to the existing line route. In the Create Time Profile dialog, enter a name for the time profile and click OK. A tab will be added to the existing time profile tabs. After creating this new time profile, enter the required stop times in the table as applicable. If the stop times in the time profile are to be added based on, say, congested travel times for cars, as might be the case with buses, Select the desired time profile and then select the clock icon. This will bring up the Set Times menu. Under Run Times, select from Link Attribute, enter a multiplication factor if needed, and then select Number. 
In the Attributes dialog, double-click the attribute for a congested auto travel time, then click OK. Select the appropriate rounding from the Round 2 drop-down and click OK. The stop times in the time profile will be automatically updated to reflect congested link travel time experienced by, say, the car transport system. Click OK to complete the process of time profile definition. Lastly, let's see how to delete a time profile. Double-click the desired line route. Select the Items and Time Profiles tab in the Edit Line Route dialog. Select the time profile to be deleted by selecting the appropriate tab. Select the red cross icon and click Yes to confirm the deletion of the time profile. Click OK in the Edit Line Route dialog. This completes the deletion of a time profile.